Wait, is there a question in chat? If you can tell me out loud, that would be helpful. Or I guess, I guess you're just talking to one another. No talking to one another. It's not allowed. So are you guys trying to be friends in here? Psh. Oh. Are we not allowed to have friends? No, I'm just kidding. No, no friends. <laughs> no new friends. Oh my gosh, my computer. So I've got a question that has to do with like work and life balance. Let's do it. So you, you're always talking about all the side products you got going, and I assume that you work on uh, freelance work as well, like studios still, right? I do. And you've got a, a pretty big family. I do. Uh, so I was just wondering, like, when you have all this stuff on your plate, like, what what do you do to not get overwhelmed with, like, there's only so many hours in the day, and how do you get it all done? Uh, I usually try not to do a lot. Actually, it seems like I do a lot, but I actually don't do a lot. Um, in fact, uh, Mike here actually helps me do a lot of stuff. And uh, he even was pitching me to do even more stuff. And I was like, yeah, let's talk about it. Let's figure it out. But <clears throat> but even then, I'm just kind of like, I don't know if I want to do more stuff. Right? So um, I got really good at painting really fast. And that has been paying me in dividends since mm -hmm. uh, because now I can I work really quickly I do a lot of freelance relatively fast these days you know and I've I've so like you finish the deadline that. and then you can do something else for a while is that kind of what you're saying wait say, say it again and you cut out so you, so you like finish before the deadline and then you kind of have some extra time yeah so I, I'll I'll get like a concept like okay so for instance I have several concepts I have to get done by the end of tonight um, and so what I usually do is I just set up, I set myself up for success. I try to set up all the projects that I have to do at a certain time. And then I do that. Uh, and I spend, uh, I spend a good amount of time. I spend like three or four hours. Uh, but I'll, I do a lot in those three or four hours. I get like three or four concepts done like per hour, pretty much. Right. Hmm. Um, or two, two concepts per hour is probably more reasonable. And then, uh, and then I submit it, and then the client's like, this is dope. And I'm like, cool. And so, uh, so this idea of like, how do you do it all, is, it's actually, I don't do a lot, is what I'm getting at, you know? Because <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm really quick, I'm very efficient with my time. Um, and because of all the things I've done in the past, like including like my tutorials, right? my YouTube videos even, like even though I don't make much money from them uh, yet, but like um, it just it just keeps on, the money keeps on coming in. I was getting, um, I was getting, what you call it, some like uh, cough syrup, or not cough syrup, like cough drops, and I saw like Ricola drops, like I got them today. And I was just thinking to myself like, are they, like they're still around, aren't they? Like they did such a good job on their branding so so early in their in the world of like cough drops. I don't know if you guys remember the Ricola, mm -hmm. right? That like I don't think they need to advertise to me ever ever again. <laughs> you know? And they're just they're just there. If you want cough drops, you just go get fucking cough drops. And I was just thinking about that. I was thinking about like these guys who made this cough drops company, they're just like, you know what? We don't need to like advertise. People know we're cough drops. We're good. And, and and then they just kind of, whatever they're doing. I don't know what they're doing. Maybe they're still advertising. Maybe I just I don't know about the cough drop game. But I'm just saying, um, I thought that was really, really cool. And uh, and another good example of kind of a lifestyle that I've been trying to li live uh, is very similar to uh, this really, like this kicker who's who's like a, one of the best kickers. And he, he plays for the Colts, you know? And all his job is is to just kick a ball. Like he, he shows up to football games and he kicks the ball between two golden posts. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Or uh, he, he punts it across the field, right? And then that's it. And then he just goes back to the bench, like goes on his phone, plays some Flappy Birds or some shit, you know? <laughs> you know, maybe gets his 
He opens up Fortnite on his new Yeah, gets a side hustle on maybe. If I was him, I would do my high side hustle. Maybe he has like a business on the side that he invested in with the millions of dollars he's made from just kicking a ball. I'm like, that's what I want to do, right? Back to what I was talking to William about like, you know, I don't really want to do, I want to get to that basic life, right? I don't really want to do a lot, you know? I've already tried the hustle game and I don't like it, <laughs> okay? I don't think most people like it. I think this is why you see this common thread amongst like YouTubers who are, their whole uh, whole, whole idea is to kind of like be a, pers- a personality and, and talk about the life. And, and then they almost always, after like a year or two, come out and say, yeah, this shit sucks. <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. take a break or something you know i think this is common i think most people don't actually enjoy that amount of su- success as much as it seems on the surface it, it's, it's not true but i think it's definitely true right and so it may seem like i do a lot but like i'm telling you like i spent a lot more time in the very beginning and and because i invested in specifically speed that has that has benefited me uh, greatly mm-hmm. you know to be able to transition into this this specific uh lifestyle you know well and, well maybe to, to uh, and so, and so just kind of really get to to answer your question in a more meaningful way um <clears throat> it's it's all about delegation right like it's all about like knowing what's important to you and what's not right so if if you want to really get good at concept art then you need to put time and effort into it and i can tell you right now with certainty that you don't need to spend 20 hours a day kind of thing you know you can spend a good like i think a good amount of time a week is somewhere between 15 to 20 hours a week like a part-time job right mm-hmm. uh or uh maybe like 30 to 40 hours a week and and when i say 15 15 is like a little close to almost it, it, it seems like too little but it trust me it's just enough right and then 40 seems like kind of what we've already gotten used to but that might still be getting close to too much, right? So somewhere between like 15, um, so somewhere between 20 and 30 hours is a good amount of time a week to invest in something, right? And I'm including the weekends too, because why can't you do stuff on the weekends either, right? You can spread that time out. Like if you spend like uh, two to three hours every day on the weekdays, it's about 15 hours, isn't it, right? And then on the weekends, you can make up the other five hours, right? Right. With another two to three hours of work, you know? Or I can say two to four hours. Like some days you just have more time than other days, right? You see my point? And, and then when you put it in that context, it really kind of helps people understand that you, you do have more time than you think you do. Mm-hmm. You're just not using it wisely, right? Uh, when I was first starting out, I was definitely not using it wisely. I was spending like 10, 12 hour days, you know, try to get good at something and I was doing it all wrong. Right. So I was so frustrating. And then, and then when I learned how to do it bro- properly the way that I'm teaching you guys, uh, I've then, you know, calculated that for my own, uh, my own progress and stuff like programming and, and other stuff. Like, uh, I actually starting to want to tell stories too. I want to try to combine my, programming skills to storytelling as well you know mm-hmm. i want to be get, getting back to telling stories again i like i actually do like telling stories and i want to get back to that and i thought what would be great if i made my own like web series but it's all like programmed and you can tell your own stories i can do that but not now. Like right now, I'm still learning programming. But in the meanwhile, I'm going to try to get better at a different style of painting. Right? And so I was looking online, and I found this Dylan Dog stuff. And I'm just like, this is what I want. <laughs> you know? I want to get back into it. And this is the kind of style that I like. And I want to, like, copy straight up. Uh, but maybe I'll just add my own flavor to it. Right? But I really do like that style. It's just so much more simplistic and uh, it really kind of mirrors my lifestyle as of now, you know? Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, spending two or two, three hours a day on this, probably unlikely. I'll probably spend like half an hour to an hour every day because my two hours are still devoted to programming. You know what I mean? And 
when you think of it this way, then you can see how I have plenty of time to do all the stuff I want to do. All right. And especially, like I said, I delegate a lot of my responsibilities now, which is really helpful. And I know not everybody is in that position, but like even before, uh, I would try to delegate my time. So like if I was uh, back when I was doing my first come roads, like I was still working full time, you know? And so what I would do is I would come into work about uh, two, two to two and a half hours early and then just do a bang out a gum road and then just get back to work right after. So every morning I would have a gum road done and then I would just upload it throughout the day, like the different videos and stuff. And then, and eventually just uh, submit it uh, or put it online around noon. You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. But you gave yourself some realistic but still pretty demanding goals is what it sounded like. To me. Yeah. Like the, the thing I learned, and this took me like maybe, like this, this is something I realized maybe five or six years ago, maybe even longer, like maybe seven years ago. But I realized, um, no, no, it was, more, it, was, it was more recent. It was like five or six years ago. Uh, I realized just that like you really don't need to spend like a crazy amount of time. You just got to be responsible with that time, right? The reason why people tend to like work at the last minute is because they were not responsible with the time before. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, I've been there. Yeah, we all have, right? I mean, it's again, another example of human condition, right? Like you, you see something like climate change, like we were talking about earlier, right? It's one of those things that we, we are clearly waiting to the last minute. <laughs> and it's, it is, the problem is that it's, it's going to be catastrophic, you know? It's like, it's only until you find out that you have like a, a cancer until you actually give a damn about what you might have done to potentially get that cancer, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it's only until you get type 2 diabetes and, is when you start to realize that you could have done differently to get away from that <clears throat> type 2 diabetes, you know what I mean? HIV. Yeah, HIV. Like a lot of things that are actually relatively preventable. Not all things, but most things are actually more preventable than people realize. You know, and it sucks when it happens. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, right now, again, like uh, a lot of people, uh, <clears throat> like the government shut down, right? Like a lot of people are really shit out of luck and it sucks, you know? And it's like, it's like in America, there's this large statistic that most people are living paycheck to paycheck and it's just a reality, mm -hmm. right? And these major catastrophes, when they happen, really will screw people over. Mm -hmm. and, and it's happening. And I think there's a little bit of, uh, there's a little bit of both happening here of like social responsibility, like meaning that we as a people should get our act together and help each other out. Clearly we do because people do GoFundMes and people fund that money. So clearly we care about helping each other out. Even for the wall, there's a GoFundMe and it's got millions of dollars to it, you know? which is really ironic because that's a government program essentially that you're trying to fund with private money. And I'm like, Oh my God. I'm surprised. I thought they'd given up on the wall. No, they're probably keeping it up uh, in hopes that it's going to eventually get there. But the, the scale in which, how much they are uh, asking, I heard, they I heard that they never going to, they had to refund it. The, did, uh, they, did they refund it? Yeah. I think well, because they didn't reach the goal or whatever. <laughs> no, no, no. I think, I think it was a scam. I think the, the uh, guy who put it together was trying to pocket the money. And then oh, like he was like, oh, people who think this. Yeah. Go I don't know if that's true. Look into yeah. it. If you have an article, I would love to read it. I'll take a look at that. I didn't hear anything. I, th I, th I would think that would be big news. I would have heard something like that. It was a headline, so I can't. I can't. <laughs> okay. Have a lot of faith Just, in that. Yeah. If you can find the headline, then uh, we'll do right. it and see for sure. But. But regardless, my point is, is that like humans have sh are very short-sighted, right? We just all are on general, uh, on average, you know? <clears throat> and, and knowing that about yourself, can, you can try to, you can do something about it. You can try to be the outlier because that's what you would be doing. You'd become the outlier. You see my point? Mm -hmm. You would be going against the green. Uh, I always say, say to people, you know, we're animals, right? Like I was saying earlier. And I also say like, you know, and animals in general, we're lazy. Right, like if you look at all, like almost most animals, like they're just lazy as hell. Like that's not something that we are like falling into. It's our default state. 
This is why we get so addicted to drugs is more often as we like, or even just addicted to things, right? Like buying stuff. And uh, we love playing video games. Like everybody consumes something like uh, social media, like you can get lost in that or YouTube videos, you know, makeup tutorials, you know what I mean? And it's just because as humans, we're just built this way that advertisers know this. This is why they take advantage of it, you know? And like I said, if you have some understanding of your own self uh, weaknesses, you can you could try to do something about it. It's like it's like being um, it's like it's like what GI Joe says. I think it's in the cartoon. It's like knowing is half the battle, right? Yeah, right. Like knowing that you're like this flawed creature, uh, you can try to do something about it, and that it's really hard. And every time you try to do something about it, your your flawedness still tries to destroy your your reasonableness. You know what I mean? It's kind of crazy. Like I actively know like all the things that I'm teaching you guys. And I still, to this day, make mistakes all the time. Right. And, uh, I've gotten better and better at it as the years go on. So maybe when I'm in like my fifties or forties, I'll be really good at it, you know, and maybe have even more insight to be able to teach other people how to obtain this as well. Right. But right now, all I can do is tell you that this is our flaws and tell you what I've tried to do to avoid it as best I can. And what I've seen other people do really well and how they avoided it, you know? Like this is this is why like um, I've been reading like how to learn books and stuff like this because it's really helpful to help me understand like just my own learning versus uh, just other people's learning as well. And it is something that should be taught in schools more right like how to better yourself on your own you know mm -hmm. like there's a, a a movie i forget what movie it was but robin williams says a quote from it is like i thought the colleges were were places where it teaches you how to think for yourself right and i'm like yeah dude that's totally what they should be you know i think even high school should do that right like why yeah, wait sure. till college <laughs> why can't we just do that right out of right away you know <clears throat> well that's how that's how learning used to be done like the classics back in even greece and those those kind of places like it was about learning how to think more than about just learning a bunch of facts yeah which i think is really lost in education these days but capitalism capitalism <laughs> as much as i, I mean love i mean you could say that but I think that there's a lot of socialism too when it comes to like having like plans that everyone has to follow, you know, making sure everyone's on the same boat, that kind of thing. But the reality is that colleges were built to help industry. Oh yeah. I mean, they definitely make lots of money. Sure. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like oh. literally like even to this day, the, 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 the jobs that our people come out with are really focus on like the capitalistic styles that we have today for instance if you graduate from high school most people tend to like the careers that people think that they have available to them are um uh, being a, a doctor an engineer or some sort of scholar right back into the school system teach other people how not to think right mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then outside of that what, what do we have police firefighters and or the military that's pretty much it for most people right so you think about that, that's kind of, that's kind of fucked up because there's so many jobs of all sorts, you yeah. know? And it, it's, it's like, you're, you're right. Like, and I think that's why um, people get really upset about uh, the college system because it is a business. And when you make it a business uh, that's really like, has like corporate interests, it's really bad news. Yeah. So the reason why this, my out. school works well is because I don't have any corporate interest. I am the dude, you know, the money you put into the class goes straight into my pocket and feeds my family, takes care of my, my lifestyle that I have right now. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I take you guys' feedback very seriously and I try to help you guys uh, as, as effectively as I can. Like I was saying, you know, before, like, you know, you guys we're we're, we're on the same team. You know what I mean? But if you have investors who has put millions of dollars into your stocks, you have people that actually um, count on you to keep on turning a profit, you mm -hmm. know, and you do something called like a lifestyle inflation where you, you yourself start to spend millions of dollars on yachts and stuff. 
and then you start losing money, you have to downgrade your lifestyle. You know, we've created a, uh, a culture that that's no good. That's no, no, you're a loser if you do that. Right. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> um, it's not healthy. And that, that is the, the, the argument against like high stakes capitalism that uh, I feel is really convenient for many people who are super capitalistic thinkers that they kind of ignore, you know, like if you think about like the tobacco industry, for instance, they truly wouldn't have give a fuck about our health. And if you might not, if you don't believe that, I mean, look at the health food industry um, or even just the food industry, right? Fast foods, like they're only selling healthier foods because people are starting to be more conscious because of government programs that look mm-hmm. into this stuff. Otherwise they would never reveal that stuff. I mean, look how, look at crazy stuff with Amazon, dude. It's like, they really got a chokehold on everything, don't they? Right? Like we need some way to manage those motherfuckers. It's kind of crazy how much power um, Amazon is getting. Cause they do this thing where they uh, actually will find like a small business, wow. see what they're doing, right? And they're like, oh, that's cool. And then they will like make a kind of product, it. right? And then sell it for cheaper, even though they're making a net loss of that, right? But that's not the point. They, ha- they have the money to be able to afford this net loss, right? right. Or the, the brick and mortar company that does sells that same kind of product cannot because mm-hmm. they're getting outmatched by this giant entity. That's crazy, right? That's intense. It's like, uh, have you ever played uh, Texas Hold'em? Yes. Okay. It's like when someone has like a 10 times chip lead on everybody at the table. It's almost impossible to get that, get the win from that person, you know, because they can just bet on every hand, right? Because your, your chip count is super low that you're never going to take their money away from them unless you win like five or six times in a row. You know what I mean? Sometimes they're trying to they call in. <laughs> yeah. You can't even bluff, right? Because they can just call it. It's a, it sucks, dude. That's why like, I remember I was playing with my best friend. We were playing at his house, and he kept on calling bluffs, and all my friends kept on believing. And I'm like, he's a liar. Trust me. And then he got, like, huge chip lead, like, right away. And so I had to, like, buy in more money, not because I was losing my money. I just wanted to have some, you know, stakes. Like, I can challenge him, and he would have to think about it, you know? And ultimately, it, it, it worked. I was able to, like, muscle him out and call his bluffs and give the money back. But I was yelling at all of my other friends because they were just like blindly, like blindly just like believing him. And I was like, dude, how the hell would he have that? And he's like, I do. Trust me. I do. <laughs> and he had such a huge chip lead, like so fast. And, it, and it, he was kicking people out of the game because of it, you know? And my point, the point I'm just trying to make is that like, that's really like a problem, you know? And, uh, and, and I think that like, again, getting, trying to get back to kind of this, this, the standard of thinking of time management, like all of this is just been, just been beat into us, right? Of like this idea that we had to work, like play hard or go home kind of thing, you know? And my attitude about it now is play smart. And, and yeah, go home. Cause home is where the heart lives. <laughs> I think I'll be family, right? There's nothing wrong with going home. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like stay with the people you care about. Like, yeah. You should you should go play with your friends and play video games and watch movies and, and procrastinate because it's going to make you feel healthier and you're going to feel better, right? What's the point of working so hard if you can't do any of these things? You know, I totally agree with you. I lived that lifestyle before. I worked in finances for a long time after art school. <laughs> Killed me. Yeah, <clears throat> exactly, man. And I I think it's. It's fine, like, I think if there's, like, some sort of sense of investment, like, if you spend a lot of time working really hard, you know, maybe you don't have a lot of responsibilities, it's just you, right? You don't have a wife or kids. You know, that's fair. I think if you know in the long term you're not going to commit to this, like, crazy work lifestyle, I think that's that's fine, right? Because that's kind of what I did and I got out of it, you know? But, uh but if you don't have that luxury, then, you know, start playing it smart now. Like, and even if you do have that luxury, I usually do tell people it is actually a good habit to teach yourself not to work so hard, even when you don't have a lot of responsibilities, because it is a hard habit to break once you, you acquired it, right? There's like habit of like constant status reaching, you know? Mm-hmm. 
Um, and so I, I think there's a little bit of opportunity for both um, working super hard and then at the same time trying to be uh, super smart about it so you don't like get yourself killed. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do right now. <laughs> cool, dude. Happy to hear it, man. Good luck. I got a question. <laughs> you got a question? Go for it. No, a, a quick correction on the Trump wall thing. Um, so the funding is actually being split. So I guess they raised like around 20 million and 13 million is being refunded. And they've all agreed that 7 million will be used to build a partial wall. <laughs> what? Yeah. How are they going to believe they're just, that? They're just going to go build their own small wall. No, he's got to have to refund the whole thing. Yeah. You can't just say partial. Well, in the, in the article I, I linked, I guess the backers all agreed or something that that's, we're okay with that. <sighs> they're, dumb. they're being robbed, dude. How are they going to know for sure? As someone who ran a failed a truck for the wall, I need crowdfunding a thing, <laughs> I can tell you right now, this guy has no effing idea how much or how little he's going to get with even as much as $7 million. Oh, shit. And you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like as someone who who's gone through the gauntlet of trying to make your own name for yourself through a crowdfunding mm -hmm. program, he has no idea how disappointed and it, he should just give it all back, man. Like I actually feel for him now. <laughs> I actually, if I could call him, hey dude, like trust me, dude. Like just give it back. You're going to create many enemies, <laughs> you know, from the people who supported this. Okay. And what's a partial wall gonna have it counted? Like they'll just go around it then. <laughs> like literally. Go over around. Well it's it's <laughs> you can't like, how big of a wall can you make with seven million? Yeah, the, the, you you can't just take the money either either. You can't just do that. You can't just be like the government's all right, thanks guys, we'll start we'll use it right away. You know, like that's not how it works, dude. And um you gotta get permits and all that stuff, and that alone costs millions of dollars, right? Well, let me see. Actually, I don't really know. I wanna. How much does it cost on average to raise a child? What the? <laughs> uh, yeah. To acquire land. Mm -hmm. Three three thousand three thousand per acre. Okay. All right. The median cost of building a home is about two hundred thousand. All right, yeah, this is not going to cost. Um, they're they're not going to be able to even afford just the land that they're going to have to acquire. Right, if he puts like one brick down, it might still make everybody happy because he's still technically building a wall. <laughs> oh my god. <clears throat> Anyways, a fool and their money are easily parted. What frustrates me is that. Uh, is that that there there is a there is a, a a need for strengthening the borders that both sides agreed with, and the, the experts, at least the ones that I saw or read about, said that it's about electronic uh, surveillance because the walls don't work because apparently they already have walls and people are already digging underneath them and drilling holes through them. So they said that like it's you don't get it, dude. Like it's not wall we need. We need like a uh, electronic surveillance, uh, but you know, uh, yeah, yeah. System. <clears throat> yeah, but you know, I, I believe that um, all we need is uh, uh, more doors, less walls, right? We need more opportunities we, we and talked about this more efficient uh, system because we're going to have to hire more people anyway, right? So why don't we just make the uh, the entries more accessible and more like where people don't have to wait months to get in, you know? Especially those who generally want to come in legally. Um, yeah, for instance, my wife. Why would you go in illegal? Yeah, why would you go legally if it's really for, like like formal and really reliable, right? It doesn't have to be easy, but it's if, very reliable and consistent, criminal. right? Right. Like it could be like a week long process. People will wait a week, especially if it's trusted. Even a month, if it's trusted, yeah, they know exactly. that they will eventually will get in. You know, uh, my my uh, wife's mom. Uh, she went through the process and she waited almost two or three months and still wouldn't hear anything until she had to eventually cross over. And you know why? It's because the Contras were trying to recruit her to be a terrorist and she did not want to be a terrorist. And they threatened to kill her and her family. So that's why she fled her country. This is my wife's family. 
So I'm like, yeah, you know, some of these people mean it when they say they don't want to go back. You know what I mean? And um, staying in Mexico doesn't make it any safer. Like they really want to go to a country that will actually protect them. And, uh, and then, yeah, you know, and my wife, uh, she came across legally uh, too. And she was only like six years old and she almost got lost. She almost died. It's crazy. I won't tell you the full story of it, but it's a pretty crazy story. You know what I mean? And so I obviously have a lot more of an anecdotal evidence of this and more of like a, a bias to it for sure. But it's, it's a, I think it's a justified bias. I, think I have a feeling, reasons. I have a feeling on the other angle where when I was like 13, my uncle got deported. Oof. Sucks. And we haven't seen him since. And so, and now uh, for crazy. my cousin, uh, there were four or three boys and one girl. <laughs> all, bless you. They're all kids along. Yeah. I remember when he got deported, he was a cherry picker in Yakima. And he, I guess he had like drug charges that he did the time on, like way before I even knew them. Um, and he was like living a clean life, trying to be a father, et cetera. And like, they just decided, you know what? Nope. We're just going to deport you now. Like he hadn't done anything like, but they, or what's the, it's like probation or something. I don't know how immigration works, but they decided like, nope, we don't want you no more because you have a criminal past. Anyway, so they deported him. They lost their their father, which sucks. And then a couple of years ago, uh, their mother died. So now they're just parentless, which really sucks. Yeah. All right. Let's change the subject. <laughs> I know, it's like, it sucks, man. This whole situation yeah. is infuriating. Hey, Anthony, I had a question. Uh, do you have like an exercise that we could do to um, practice speed? Oh, yeah. The best exercise is uh, using a timer. Almost nothing else I can think of does a better job than the timer. And the reason why is because, you know, the timer is honest, right? It doesn't lie to you. So, so like, if you're trying to, like, get better, uh, I usually gauge the timer based off of your like what what your skill level is and you're just like knocking it off like knocking off like a uh, to, to like half the time or third a uh, third of the time maybe or a little bit more like two-thirds of the time maybe if you feel more comfortable with that so for instance let's say it takes you like two hours to do a reasonable sketch yeah. right yeah. so try to do it in an hour or like an hour and 20 minutes or something like this you so know what i mean so like maybe like the first time i do a sketch i should time myself see how long that takes and then the next time try to cut the time in half yeah and then just do that until you start to feel comfortable with that like that's not going to be real quick like it's going to take a while right yeah but then once you start feeling really comfortable with uh an uh hour sketch right then try to cut that in half oh, okay and i mean i'm talking like years this might take you years okay yeah and so because you might not even start out at like like we were, we're talking like hours but it might take you like to a sketch where you feel like it's pretty good quality yeah so it, it might take you five hours to do a quality sketch. So try to do it in three or three or four hours, even you know, like yeah. even just shave off an hour, and then and then once you start feeling comfortable with that, which could take you like you know six or seven months, then like try to shave that in half or to like two thirds, and again that could probably take you another six or seven months or even another year, you know. But if you keep this up, eventually you'll you'll get better. Um, and then on top of that, you should just understand foundational information. And this should just be automatic anyways. You should just be getting good at this, even if it takes you two hours to do a painting, you know? Um, because that that's ultimately what's making you faster, right? Like you're, you just have a more of a, 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 a shorthand understanding of a lot of the things you need to draw well, right? Like I'm drawing the space, but, but I have like a lot of shorthand understanding of like how to render, how to draw people's faces, yeah. uh, graphic design. So it's, it's a lot easier for me. I was able to do this in, in less than an hour, you know? And, and a lot of that is because of what I just talked about, right? Like I timed myself. I even timed myself for this. I already know for a fact that this was about 35 minutes, you know? Mm -hmm. And I've been practicing painting things in about 20 minutes lately. And, oh, okay. and it's not that I paint, I'm painting any better. I'm just painting faster, I'm getting smarter, right? Yeah. <clears throat> and so that's something that 
uh, I would recommend. And then adding on to that, like, yeah, like I said, like understanding like foundational knowledge is super valuable, right? Like having like, uh, like some sort of larger understanding of like how to draw and paint stuff well, you know, oh. is, is really, really valuable too. And that's not easy either. That takes time. It takes a lot of time actually yeah. too. And so I would say using timers pretty often is one of the one things that I would say you should do, right? Okay. Um, and then uh, understanding foundational stuff pretty often. Uh, one thing that I would also think that would be really helpful to become a better painter or like a faster painter is to basically like do lots and lots of like just mini paintings mm -hmm. you know like something that has nothing to do with like a full character like maybe just like a bust or just like a little like form study mm -hmm. so you're just like, practicing like the, the the nuanced of your painting process you know you're not you're not always going full speed ahead and trying to trying to paint faster every time you know you're like you're just try, like practicing like brush work or something or you're practicing like how to to lay down a line properly or construct shapes a little bit more effectively in just this really small but closed environment, you know? Okay. Uh, and then and then whenever you go back to like painting your, your thing or you're doing your time study or whatever, um, you have a little bit more practice. A good example of this in like some other like activity, like a sport would be like, let's say like you're a, a soccer player and it's like practicing sprints, you know? versus a scrimmage right i'm like saying you should scrimmage to get better at playing the game but you should also do those little sprints or like passing the ball you know what i mean yeah that have nothing to do with like the sport directly but indirectly it does help a lot you see my point like like um like when you're seeing foundational skills like um studying like light like the way yeah you're in a very small situation like you're just painting spheres or you're painting spheres with little holes in them you know Oh, okay. It's, not, it's like you're not going to show it to anybody probably, but it's just definitely helpful to you. Yeah. Nah, I mean? Yep. <laughs> All right. Cool. Thank you. <clears throat> Any other questions? Ooh. I'll pick one more. Yeah, I have a question. Yeah, go for it. Um. So last time you were talking about um, kind of getting away from like the hive mind. Uh, that that is art station. You don't like the hive mind, dude. <laughs> nah, yeah, I, I I do say that. But but like, how do you get away from that, but also kind of like maintain your quote unquote marketability? You know, like mainstream kind of. Does that make sense? Yeah. So to be clear, uh, I don't necessarily avoid it entirely. All right, I avoid it. I avoid it whenever I want to try to be like stand out mm -hmm. uh, I actually go to art station mostly just to remind me of how much other people are badasses right. <laughs> right like it's a quality control thing rather than a creative or inventive process okay so I think you should do the same like you go to art station as a way to kind of quantify and give you kind of like a reality reality check from time to time you know mm -hmm. Um, but you should you should definitely avoid it entirely if you want to like really stand out because um, yeah you'll fall into the high mind you know it's definitely a closed environment you know what I mean mm -hmm. that's why I still kind of like just almost exclusively stay on Pinterest even for like quality control stuff because even Pinterest has really good artwork there you know mm -hmm. but the difference is that the artwork is is a little bit more scattered you know yeah. And there's a, there's a variety there that you just don't get so much from Art Station. Like you would, you just wouldn't see these like comic pages on Art Station fluently, right. you know. When I saw those, I was like, "Damn, hell yeah, those are dope," you know. Mm -hmm. And I know quite a few people are probably looking at the same images within a, the concept art industry. Uh, I saw these like architecture drawings too. For instance, look at these. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So like, it's still a, it's still not like. Um, it's still good work, right? It's still not like some sort of like abstract thing that has nothing to do with drawing. Like it's actually still pretty cool drawing. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like, if I were to come to like the, the table and start drawing architecture in this way, people would be like, whoa, AJ's bringing, bringing some new, new stuff to the game. 
And I'm like, no, nah, not really. I'm just like copying this other person you just never looked at because you just only look at other art station people, right? Right, right. That's that's what I mean by like you should diversify. Like you should definitely still go there because there's still great artwork. But you know, like I'm almost certain that like 50% of what I'm about to see right now is going to be like uh, females that are super hyper stylized armor. Yeah, see, so like the one of the biggest images, right? Hmm. It's just, mm-hmm. that's what it is. That's just how it's going to be. It's just like, it still feels very, um, yeah, most like about 50%, maybe like, maybe like 40% if I was being fair to art station. <laughs> right. But that's fine. That's, this is the industry. Like, this is what people want to see when they come to art station. You know, if I go to Deviant Art, it's mostly furies. Right. <laughs> right which there's nothing wrong with that but it's not what i want (laughs) and i think i think the the problem that people have is that they want to like change like their favorite platform to suit their specific needs instead of just realizing that this platform is going to be whatever the platform is going to be their algorithms are going to roll the way they're going to roll you know Mm -hmm. and to change that is 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 naive i think it's smarter just to find your own places of influence you know Mm-hmm. And for me, like when I say I don't use ArtStation, that's not me slapping them across the face. I actually love ArtStation. I think it's a great tool for artists, right? Mm-hmm. We needed this for years, like an actual really good platform to showcase concept art. But as a consequence, most people just stay here and live here without knowing that there's plenty of other artwork to look at that has nothing to do with concept art, but it's still beautiful to look at and really great and really inspiring, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so when I say got to like stay mainstream, I'm saying you can do both. It's not impossible. All right. You can right. look at like mainstream artwork to kind of like, this is a great image for quality control. You know, like if you're going for like really good quality, you can always look at Cheng Wei Pan stuff as a reminder, but then you bring like some sort of new kind of new age Afro punk design that no one's ever seen before. You see my point? Mm-hmm. That's what people aren't doing enough of. They're not looking outside of ArtStation. That's why I said, like, try to avoid the hive mind if you want to stand out. And usually people who do this, because, again, as, as few as, as many of, of the stuff on here is, like, that kind of bizarre stuff, or I'm sorry, like, the, not the bizarre stuff, like, the common stuff that we're used to seeing. If you look at some of the most popular artists, right? Oh, nice. Evan made it to the top. All right. I see you. Yes. I see you, Evan. Oops. Went the wrong way. Where did I? You'll see. Oh, yeah, Evan totally did it. 60,000, 200,000. Wow. I really, I really got trampled. I used to be on the top. Five. Look at that. Because I haven't posted as much as I used to. Sixty thousand, though. Dang, that's crazy. But if you look, like you'll see that some of the 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 artists here that are on the top are actually those who have a little bit more uniqueness. And this is with the pros. Let's take off the pros. I'm probably not even on here anymore. We'll see. Ross Tran's gonna be on top because pop culture is still still super popular. (laughs) Okay, so Ross is still gonna. Maintain that, but look at the uh, WL Ope, Evan still up there, Zeronis. Then we got Ruin Jaya, you know, we got Greg Wachikowski, we got Bayward, we got Peter Jablonski, you know, mm-hmm. Bay's still up there. Am I even on the top 20? Oh, I don't even make it to the first <laughs> row anymore. Dang. That's what happens when you don't pay, post often. <laughs> All right, I'm not. I'm not upset about it. Wow, um, you suck, dude. Yeah, I'm actually crying. <laughs> <laughs> crying. Oh, All of dude. a sudden, you're not. How you're far down am I, dude? Look at how far I had to go. What? This is on. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. I love that you're counting. 17. 18, 19, 20. Oh, Sparth beat me? That's not that's not acceptable. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 
Twenty seven. You were in like the top ten on all these lists. Huh? I said you were you were in the top ten on all these lists not too long. Uh, ago. No, and the followers I was always a little uh, below, but in the likes I was much higher. <clears throat> and that's that's just a product of I just had a lot of images to even like, right? Um, yeah, but definitely in the I was in the top ten uh, in the likes. But now I'm 27. Dang, dude, that's crazy. And I it's it's literally because I have not been posting as much as I used to. And mainly because I've been uh, learning programming. But it's clear, like, it's clear to me that when you post often, like someone like Ross even, you know, uh, you get more followers. It's just how it works on Instagram, on Facebook, on uh, ArtStation, everything. Let's see where I'm at now. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Okay. You also, uh, you also got some of the top-selling marketplace uh, products. Yeah, yeah, and it's because uh, we post often, and we post a lot, right? Mm-hmm. And so, <clears throat> I just need, I just need to get back on that posting game, dude. Just got to get back on it. And it's, it doesn't even have to be the best of my work. It just has to be good work that I usually would. Pump, pump out or something and people will be like, oh i like this guy oh well he's got more work and then they start to like more of my work but it's it's funny because the point i'm making is that you know you can see like some of the best that are followed and like yes you have some of the, the artists that we were like we're talking about like sakimi chan and like uh Zeronis, right but many of them aren't not like that They're mo- most of them uh are actually they do some really cool stuff that's unique and interesting, you know? It's not entirely just titties, you know? And I got to represent the non-titty game, so I need to get back up there. <laughs> hashtag no tits. Yeah, hashtag no titty game. And so, and it's it's just how it works, like I was talking about earlier. Like, uh, If you think of probably the di- demographics of this website, it's probably mostly male, too, I would assume. Not saying that that's fair. This is how it might be, and so uh, titties will probably do pretty good on the site like that. That's all I'm getting at. And so, yeah, my my ultimate answer to that question is just yeah, you can you can do both. You can be inspired by both. It's fine. I'm just saying, don't get trapped. Like, uh, think of it like this: don't get stuck in an echo chamber. You know what I mean? Like it is yeah. good to maintain uh, points of views that you admired or liked in the past, as well as learn some new ones. You know, take some other opinions, and that's all I'm getting at. It will broaden your skill set. Makes sense. Makes sense. All right. Oh uh, yeah, this this person has titties. I need to <laughs> shave them off to maintain the no titty game. <laughs> shave them off. Good, dude. <laughs> I think stylistically you're gonna, you're gonna down. Yeah. <laughs> stylistically it was fine I was just joking I'm not gonna get real I'm just saying I guess it was more like not exclusively I'm not saying that I will never draw women women are my favorite things to draw I just don't do the hypersexualized women as often anyway <clears throat> and that again that's not me knocking and actually think that's fine that people can do whatever they want they can draw whatever they want right uh, I'm just, I'm just not surprised. I like, see people get really like upset, like, like crazy upset when people who draw like over sexualized characters are really successful. And I'm just kind of like, duh, dude, everyone watches porn. <laughs> it's like, if you don't want to do that, then don't be mad at others who do. They, they found a thing that they really like, uh, and it happens to be super popular, you know? And if you don't do popular things, then don't be shocked that it's not popular. And another thing that I like to point out is just because it's not popular doesn't make it good. Sometimes people confuse that idea. Right? Like this, like I, I generally believe that cyberpunk is 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 not um, good. Like I think people don't actually like it in the masses for for whatever reason. Because I don't think it ultimately is a good thing that people will actually enjoy. I think niche audiences really enjoy cyberpunk and stuff, but every movie that I've ever seen that has like highly cy- cyberpunk themes, I generally do not like, uh, except for like the latest Blade Runner. But even then, I fell asleep halfway through. 
And so I think there's something there. I think uh, it's a lost genre. I think it might work best in games, though. I think Deus Ex did fine. And I think this new game that's coming out is going to do well. I have a feeling it's going to do great. But when it comes to movies and narratives, I don't know. I don't know why people get it wrong or what they're doing wrong. I feel that way about steampunk. Yeah, I think steampunk falls into that same category of just it's popular through a, a niche group of people, but it's just not. There's something about it that masses just don't get or like. You know, I really like the old western aesthetic, but we're not seeing a lot of that. Everything's going future. Yeah, I don't know. I don't get it, and I'm not gonna look more into it. I just don't hate on stuff I don't like. I just move. On. I move forward with what I do like. You know. I think it's a waste of energy. Like I, me and Mike, we've talked about this, and uh, where I just started slowly cutting myself off of YouTube because I've, I've just realized like almost ninety percent of it now, especially what I follow, is everybody just complains about there's something wrong with the world. Everything sucks, and I'm just like, well, I don't know, man. When I go to the grocery store, I don't really, I don't feel like everything sucks. I feel like everything's all right. <laughs> you know, what, what's funny and, to me. About- that is I was, I was embracing it when we talked about it i was on the other side i was like yeah that stuff's awesome i love the controversy i love the drama i eat that stuff up and then when we talked about it i thought about it more and was like wait a minute i don't care <laughs> like <laughs> wait do i care i was like no i i don't yeah like, it's, it's really pointless it's actually i think I it it's poisoned our souls a bit too i really yeah. think because i was getting a little more aggro than i normally would mm-hmm. and i was like what the heck's going on man and, I, and that's why I stopped. I, I, it's funny because, you know, back in the day, my parents used to say, stop watching TV, it'll rot your brain. Yeah. And now I'm saying that about my kids, like, stop watching YouTube. And I'm like, watch TV. <laughs> I'm like, watch this TV show for three hours instead of watching any YouTube channel for three hours. <laughs> right? Like, they watch these kids opening toys. And I'm like, dude, that is definitely rotting your brain. Yeah. You know, teaching. yeah like, our, our friend Wen still posts some of that stuff, and I don't even watch it anymore. Yeah, I, I just completely cut off. And I see the titles too. They're like, SJW gets owned by this and that. Or, you know, like so-and-so gets dunked on. And I'm like, all right, I don't care. I'm out of here. Like one of them was uh, the new Activision CEO got a $15 million bonus or something. And he yeah, I don't know anything about that. And I'm like, okay, who cares? <laughs> yeah. Like, good for him. Oh, like, just a second. All right, I got to get going. <laughs> I was supposed to wrap long ago. Uh, but anyways, thanks guys for the good works and the great questions and the great commentary. I appreciate y'all. Hope you guys have a great weekend. Work hard, work smart, and uh, I'll see you guys next class. Peace out, everybody. Have a good see one. Hey, Anthony. Have a good night. Thank you for watching this video. I appreciate it. Please subscribe to watch more in the future. If you like the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. If you like this content, you can go to my website, robotpencil.net, where you can find mentorships, tutorials, and a Patreon to get more exclusive content. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys in my next videos.